That's right. Peter went to Cornelius' house. Salvation, the first Gentile convert. Remember, I told you you need to be thinking. It was Jewish. It was a Jewish church, and I know that sounds awkward to say, but it was Jewish Christianity, Jewish Christianity, Jewish Christianity. It's really what it was. They were only going to Jews to share the gospel, which sounds odd to you and I. So now we have the beginning of Acts 11, Acts 10. Remember, Peter had the dream of the sheet, the sail coming down from heaven, and the unclean animals, and God said, what I've made clean, do not declare unclean. He's basically saying there is no more of that. And then the next scene is Acts 10, the beginning of Acts 11, when Peter goes to Cornelius' house, an Italian soldier, and converts him and his whole family, a Gentile. And then Jerusalem called him out, said, hey, what's going on? And uh, then they agreed it was going to the uh, Gentiles as well. This will be finalized in Acts 15, but that's what we see now. So... We're going to conclude Acts 11, same concept and same theme, and then we're going to, it'll move into Paul as he takes it through the, you know, remainder of the, uh, of the world as he goes there. So let's, uh, let's just read Acts 11 real quick, 19 through 30, the grass wither, the flower fade, but the word of our God will stand forever, amen. Acts 11, beginning at 19. And they which were scattered abroad upon the uh, persecution that arose about Stephen. This was Stephen when he was stoned back in uh, Acts 8. Remember that? So uh, this is Stephen. Traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch. Preaching the word of to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, Gentile areas. Which, they, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, the Greeks, the, non, the, the, the non-Jews, the Gentiles, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was on them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Verse 22. Then tidings of these things came into the ears of the church, which were in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barabbas. Barnabas, not Barabbas. I've gotten the crucifix in him. Barnabas. So you all know Barnabas, son of encouragement, that he should go as far as Antioch. Antioch is outside of Israel. Who, when he came, had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that the purpose of the heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and much people were added unto the Lord. So many Gentiles were being saved. Then departed Barnabas to, to Tarsus for, to seek Saul. So we're back bringing in Saul, soon to be Paul. And when he had finished him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that the whole year they assembled uh, themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians, for the first time in Antioch. So they were called Christians in Antioch for the first time. And in these days came a prophet from Jerusalem to Antioch. And there stood up one of them named Agabus, and, sig- and, and signified by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that there would be a great famine throughout the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt into Judea, or Jerusalem, which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. So here we have Barnabas and Saul going to Jerusalem from Antioch. So so this is a transition. So the Jerusalem church, and this is going to sound weird, I don't know how to, the Jewish Christians is now going to shift. So the, the church headquarters, which has been in Jerusalem from Acts 1 to Acts 11, is now going to be in Antioch. So there is a switch. Paul will begin his three missionary journeys from Antioch. And look here. What does Antioch do for Jerusalem when there's a famine? They send money to them. You would think it'd be the other way around. But Antioch, because they had so many converts, 
is sending money to Jerusalem. Now, you should have, take a minute to wrap your mind around that because, you know, again, Jewish, Jewish, Christ, I mean, Jewish Christian is really the theme on that, and now it's Gentiles. And now it's Gentiles. And Paul was called to decide. He is our apostle, so to speak, the apostle to the Gentiles. Now, and we say bye to Peter here, too. We'll see him again in Acts 15. He'll be in Jerusalem when they talk about, hey, does a, does a, Jew, does a Gentile have to convert to Judaism before being a Christian? And that's what's going to be discussed in Acts 15. We'll see Peter stand up then, say a few words, but no more do we hear about Peter, okay? We switched. Peter was for the Jews, did a great job, but now Paul's, Saul's taken over, and he's going to go to the Gentiles in the region, okay? So, uh, but as you see in verse 19, they were scattered abroad upon the persecution which arose from Stephen, so when, when, when Stephen was persecuted, they did scatter. They scattered to Samaria, Judea, and outside to Cyprus, to Phoenicia, and to Antioch. So they're, they're going this far. So some of those who were scattered of the Jewish Christians are coming to Gentile areas sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. So there was some conversion. There was some conversion there. So... Uh, we have verse 19 through 21, many believed. Then 22 to 24, Barnabas sent from Jerusalem to check out, to validate. To validate, to say, hey, this is a work of God. You've seen that a lot in the first 12 chapters of Acts, where they go and send, you know, Peter and John went to Samaria to validate that a Samaritan could, in fact, be saved. So we see that, ver that, that, that uh, apostolic, uh, 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 checking on there, the, the, the apostolic to make sure that what's going on is, can be verified by someone who has apostolic authority. So, you know, Barnabas is kind of a second-tier apostle. He's a small-A apostle. You know, Peter and John were big-A apostles. So to the Antioch, you know, they're sending Barnabas, still a great figure in the New Testament, but he wasn't a capital-A apostle. But he was... He, he was qualified to verify, hey, this is a true movement of God. So, uh, so we just see the validation there. I just, that's really important that we see this, that this wasn't some kind of hocus pocus. You know, we see now such great, and I mean great apostasy in the church. Um, there was a certain, well, I'm a, the Methodist church had their uh, uh, yearly meeting and they met, and you know what the theme was? Women power. Women, they're ordaining the women for pastors. They're ordaining lesbians and Jews. They're, they're getting up, and it's all about love, God's love. It's all about love. We, you know, don't talk about hate. It's not, we got to love and embrace. We see apostasy in the church all the time, and we see it here. We're going to see it. As I've told you many times, every book of the Bible in the New Testament except Philman, warns against apostasy, warns against that sheep, that wolf in sheep's clothing, because it can so easily go off the rail. Prosperity gospel. Who hasn't heard the prosperity gospel? Oh, if you're, oh, you just pray, you pray to God, you pray this prayer, and he'll give you that car, that house, that, you know, and it's, that contradicts the Bible. You know, Jesus Christ said, they hated me, First, they're going to hate you. Take up your cross. The cross is not an instrument. It wasn't your flower. It wasn't your love beads or peace symbol. It's take up your cross. The cross was a symbol of persecution and shame. So just remember that, okay? I want you to remember that. So, uh, so, we, so, 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 so we see the church in Antioch growing. It's becoming the capital of the church now. It's going to be Antioch. Like I said, all of Paul's journeys are going to be from there. Um, it's the first Christian church for Gentiles. So, uh, so that's just really important. So then we see in verse 24, when they sent Barnabas, verse 23, he, who, when he came, Barnabas, and had seen the grace of God and was glad and exhorted them all 
that the purpose of the heart, they would cleave unto the Lord. So he's loving what he's seeing. He's affirming what he's seeing, Barnabas. And then he says, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and the faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus to seek Saul. Why did Barnabas, after spending some time with Antioch, go get Saul? And then brought him back. So what was the purpose there? They, it, yes. Yes. I mean, Barnabas could have said, he could have said, man, this is great. We're just going to have church every day, and we're going to say, ah, kumbaya, kumbaya. But, but there's a right way and a wrong way to worship God. And he needed help, convincing. not convincing. He needed help teaching these people. Now, guys, I'm going to tell you, the purpose of, of every single, your purpose should be to make disciples. And you see I have Matthew 28 there at the bottom of your sheet. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded, and lo, I am with you always. The, the one problem we have in the church today is ignorance. We do not know our Bible. We do not know our Bible. And most people, you can, you can quote your favorite Bible verse. You may be able to quote one more, but most people who claim to be Christians, followers of Jesus, could not quote more than three. And that's a shame. That is a shame. We need to be, it's, the church is about teaching and instructing the Bible. The purpose is to make disciples. The plan is to teach believers, and the process is to gather. We gather. We're gathering Wednesday night. We're going through the Bible to scatter. We make disciples. We go out and scatter, we make disciples. It's a cycle, see? So we make disciples, we bring them in, we learn, and then we go back out. It is, that is the process. It's, uh, it's a circular. That's what we should be doing all the time. We, 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 we teach it, and then you go out there and me and preach it. We gather to learn. You'll hear me say this, and a lot of people are not going to like this, the church is for the believer, okay? The church is, the Sunday morning and Wednesday night services are for the believer. Now, can you bring an unbeliever in on Wednesday night? Or, yes, please, please let them hear God's word. But I'm going to gear the message for the believer. My job is to protect you and the best way I can protect you is to teach you. I mean, we need to put that on a big old sign. The best way I can protect you is to teach you. Years ago, I learned, and I don't know if I told you this, bear with me. The FBI, the FBI counterfeit division. Do you know how they, they, they pick out the false bills? How do they pick out the false bills, Mom? They study the original. It's that simple. So when they see a fake one, they know it. Because they know the original $100 bill better than anybody. They know it so well. How do you point out a heresy? You know God's Word. You know it. That's how you point out heresy. So when a prosperity gospel guy comes to you, you can say, whoa, 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 you're taking certain verses out of context and then ignoring. I mean, tell me one disciple, one apostle 
who drove up in a BMW in a nice mansion, fine clothing, none of them. They all died horrible deaths. Who's that? John, John, I would not want John's life. You know John was martyred? It just didn't kill him. He was boiled. And because the, rule, the Roman rules were if you were martyred and it didn't kill you, you could not be martyred again. His skin, it, John probably spent the rest of his life with no one being able to touch him. Can you imagine trying to sleep, trying to shower with what John had to deal with physically after being boiled? Boiled alive. Well, it was, it was, he was put on out as punishment, but no, no, because you, you I mean you, once you've been martyred, you can't be martyred again. So it was punishment for him. But it was uh, God sent him there. And, you know, you can say the Romans punished him there, but ultimately God sent him there because it, you know he, he wrote the Bible, he wrote Revelation. So John, you know, John's a, he wrote a gospel. Three epistles and Revelation. We forget John wrote about Revelation. And so uh, re- it's Revelation, not Shuns. It's not Revelations. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's what all it is. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. So, so I, if we got to know the Bible, we must know our Bible. We read it. We get into it, we study it. That's so important, guys. It's so important. I, I just, I just, you know, if I could do, if I could just, my prayer would just be that you would love God's Word. That would be what you cling to. If you have any questions about anything, go to God's Word. Man, do you know, today you can Google you can Google, I mean, you can Google things. Is this right? Bible verses about, and I mean, Google, send them to you. You know, it's a great tool, but we don't use it, do we? We don't use it like we should. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, guys, this is, this, this is, this, this is important stuff. We must know God's Word. I mean, it's like if mom and I, if I claimed to love mom and she was always writing me love letters and you came into my apartment and saw them and they were unopened, what would you think? You don't love her. You should be memorizing those, cherishing them. Ah, you know, she loves me, I love her. That's, that's enough. Love wins. Love wins. Yeah, uh-uh. We need to study God's Word. This is how we get to know the Lord. Read, read, read Matthew 28 again. Go ye therefore and teach, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. What does Jesus say in Luke 6? Why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? You know, that's a real simple question. But I'd like an answer. Why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? It just, it just baffles me. It just baffles me. So, yeah, again, I could stay on this a long time, but we need to know God's Word. It is, it is, it is so important. It is so important. So, it, it's, it, it's transitioning here from a, you know, again, I know it sounds weird, from a Jewish Christian to now we have the, I know there's only one Christian, but they were predominantly going, I mean, they were exclusively going to Jews, going to Jews, going to Jews. And I get that. For 1,500 years, they had the Mosaic Law. I can't imagine the transition. I cannot imagine the transition in Acts to now what you have known and studied your whole life, you know, p- people are saying you don't need to you know, keep the sideburns on your hair. You don't need to obey those dietary laws. You know? You've been doing that. Your parents have been doing that. Your grandparents. Tradition, as you know, is a tough thing. To change that, that that's, a, that's an amazing thing. But that's why 
we go to God's Word. We go to God's Word. And they didn't have the New Testament yet. So I know it, was, it had to be a Holy Ghost thing then. God had to instill in them that. You know, because I'd be going to Scripture going, wait a minute, Peter, I mean, tell me, you tell me you had a dream. I have all kinds of weird dreams. All I know is God's Word says, don't eat that pig. I mean, really, think about it. Think about it. So how did they overcome that barrier? Miracles. If I come and tell you I saw this sheep come down with unclean animals, Peter, come help me. My, my daughter's dead. And I come and raise her from the dead. I kind of got some clout, don't I? That's why we see a lot of miracles in the first of Acts. We see a lot of miracles affirming the apostles, capital A, affirming their words. They weren't crazy drunk men. They were godly men who were moved by the Holy Spirit. So it's important that we understand that. So, uh, so anyway, so you know, I, you know, that's where I think about it a lot. How, if I had the Old Testament saying, don't eat pig, and I got Peter telling me to eat a pig, I'm conflicted. I'm going, ah, you know, ah, it says it right here. So, I, you know, I need a sign. <laughs> I need a sign, as John says. I need a sign. So, uh, and that's the sign. And that, and, you know, what did Jesus say? I didn't come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill an important word. He fulfilled the law. Why did Jesus Christ have to fulfill the law? To satisfy God demands, demands, write that down. God demands perfection to get to heaven. You have to be perfect to get to heaven. Raise your hand if you're perfect. I'm nowhere near, ask her. But guess who was? Jesus Christ. And guess who my faith is in? It's a real, it's a, it's a simple analogy. My faith is in Jesus Christ. He lived my perfect life. He lived the life God requires. But then guess what else Jesus did for me? He died my death. Romans 6 says, the penalty of sin is death. So Christ, being sinless, goes to the cross for me, for you. So he lived your life, and then he died your death. Man, that's a twofer. That's a two. Don't know what a twofer is? That's a two for one. Think about that, guys. Now, do we sin to, so grace may abound? That's what Paul says in Romans. So do we keep sinning that grace may abound? Heavens, no. Paul says, God forbid we don't do that. We want to glorify God. We want to praise God. We want to give him all the glory. The crowns you earn are only so you can throw them at the feet of Jesus and say, thank you, Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It has nothing to do with me. All about Jesus and has nothing to do with me. Any questions? I, I, I mean, I did, this is a really an amazing chapter 11, the whole part of it, just how the Gentiles, that's so awesome for us, you know? that we get to live in this time of grace. We don't, we're not under the law anymore. The law's good. Paul tells us that in Romans. The law is good. But we're under grace. We, the, we don't have to live according to the law. We don't. The law was a burden. The law was a mirror. It showed us our sin. No one could accomplish the law. No one. The law was there to show you you're a sinner. 
And that's what the law was supposed to do. But the Jews saw it as a, as a goal. Hey, let's, we got to be perfect. And so the Pharisees walked around real you know, pompous-like, like, yes, I don't do anything. I, I always fulfill and keep the law. You know, that's why Jesus was saying you, de- you, you tithe your deal seeds, you know, your small little seeds, but you know, the hardy part, the weighty part of the law, you ignore but these little parts, you just you do them and just ignore the, the, the hardy parts. And that's what they were doing. It's just a, it was something they could accomplish. Oh, I, I do that. I do that. I do my prayers, all my prayers, all my fasting. Remember in Matthew 6? Oh, sackcloth and ashes. I'm, I'm fasting today. Look at me. You know? Yeah, no. So, so we need to be thankful as Gentiles. We're grafted in, we're grafted in to the, to, to the olive tree, to, you know, we're grafted in, but we are just as accepted. People don't do what the Jews did. They got in their holy huddle and ignored what they were supposed to do. They're supposed to glorify God by sharing God. They didn't do it. Don't make that mistake. Don't get in the holy huddle. Holy huddle's great. Holy huddle's great, but we got to break and run the play. You got to break from that huddle and run the play. And the play, we call it from the playbook. We share Jesus Christ with our neighbor, friends. Hey, you, you probably don't do it the way I do it. And that's great. That's great. The Holy Spirit's not weird, but we're weird. Don't, you know? I do it my way, you do it your way, but share the gospel. And like I said, bro, God loves you. That is not the gospel. Do not ever share that. In fact, if you do say, my pastor told me not to share it this way, but I'm going to anyway. You got to say, bro, you're a sinner in need of a Savior. And let me tell you about it because that's exactly the way I was. But I was a worse sinner than you, I can guarantee you. But Jesus Christ saved me. Why, I have no clue, but he saved me. And because of Jesus Christ, I have eternity with the Father. It is, it, it is the best message. There, there's no better message than the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we're going to see the Gentiles get excited about that. You know, Acts 12 will start out with, uh, you know, Peter and uh, uh, James get in prison. And James gets killed. And then Peter gets out. So, uh, but, but James is beheaded. Herod beheads, you know, James. One of the, 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 John's brother. John, the gospel writer, the writer of Revelation. John's brother is thrown in jail and beheaded. What a waste. We just didn't see much of James in, in, in Acts. But we're going to see it in, you know, Acts 12. Not, not, not the half-brother of Jesus that wrote James, but, you know, James, the son of Zebedee. Thunder, thunder, yeah. The ones that said, Jesus, do you want us to call down thunder on these guys? Fire and brimstone? So, uh, yeah, we're going to see James martyred. That contradicts the prosperity gospel big time. So, uh, so he's going to be martyred, but the church goes on. That's what's so awesome. The church will go on. We're going to see Paul thrown in jail, whipped, scourged. You know, he, he gets into it in Corinthians of all the things, stoned until they thought they'd killed him. And you know what he did after he got stoned and when he finally came to? Went right back in. Boy, I'd have been running from them guys. I'd have gone to the next city. He gets right back up. Why? He loves the Jewish people. And he knows that his life is, 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 is far less important than someone else's life. He says it in Romans 11, Lord, if I could take their punishment, the Jews, I would. Man, you'll never hear me say that because their punishment is going to hell for eternity. Paul was saying, I would, I, I would go to hell for the Jews. I love them that much. And he meant it. He meant it. And that's how much we got to love people, that we share the gospel. And I know sometimes, well, most of the time, people do not like to hear that. They, they don't want to hear your religion. Keep that to yourself. 
But guys, there's no more loving act than to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. None whatsoever. Any questions or comments? Oh, yeah. 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 And it's, it's hard. I, I, you know, it's hard. But the first time you do it, the second time you do it, you know, it gets a little bit, I don't want to say easier, but you get more confidence, you get more boldness. You, you know, you just kind of waken the Holy Spirit. So, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, that's, we're called to do that. I mean, I, you know, it's just my nature. I wish God gave us a quota. You have to share the gospel, you know, one, once a week, 52 times a year. And I need that, you know, I need Peter. Peter, you better share the gospel, the full gospel, 52 times a year. I want you once a week. But then, what if somebody came to me and said, Peter, I'll give you $1,000 a week if you'll just share the gospel one time. Woo! Buddy, I'll do it twice for 1000 a week. You know, but that's, to me, there's a problem there. God tells us to do it, make it part of our lives. And we don't. But if somebody came up and offered us money to do it, we would. He gives us eternal life. Now, you know, think about that. So, now, I don't know. I, I think it's great now we're going to transition, you know, to, to, to our people, the Gentiles, you know, who, who aren't burdened with the judicial law. And the, the law is great. Don't misunderstand me. But just the ritualistic ceremonial law that the Jews struggle with, even today, 2,000 years later, they, they, they struggle with that, that Jesus would, would, would abolish that. And he didn't abolish it. He just fulfilled it. But uh, your heart breaks when you go to Jerusalem and see the, the men wearing the phylacteries, the little boxes, and got their hair long. And, uh, New or New York. I'm really, the, the big cities, you'll see a lot of that. So... Uh, so, so that's important. Um, so what is significant about Antioch Church? It's a, it's a Gentile. It's the first Gentile. Why does the church in Jerusalem send Barnabas to the church of Antioch? The affirmation, the um, apostle, an apostle affirming, hey, this is legitimate, and we need to do this. What happens as the result of Barnabas going to Antioch, he, he affirms it, and he was in great joy. In fact, he knows there's so much to do, so much teaching and learning and, and making sure they get it right. He goes and gets somebody. He gets Saul. So now we're seeing Saul getting caught off the bench, and buddy boy, he's, he's about to become an all-star. We see Saul caught off the bench. What is the reason we see Agabus? In, well, I know we didn't get into that. So, so. It's really to show the transition of now the Antioch, the church in Antioch, is now taking up donations for Jerusalem. Just showing the, the strength of that church, the, the heart of that church, and the love of that church to share with their Jewish Christian brothers. And I know that's a weird term, and I'm not, you know, it's, but they're, 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 they're in Christ, but they're sharing, and they're getting them through this famine. And, and where do we remember about famines before? In Genesis, don't we? You know, that's where Joseph was so good to his brothers who didn't even know, getting into a whole other story, it was Joseph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll get you. So remember, we got a job to do. We got a job to do, not, not because we're, and well, yeah, we're told to do it, because we want to do it. As believers in Jesus Christ, you want to to share the gospel. You want to see your friends and your family and your neighbors. These are image bearers of God. And we've got to respect that. We, we, the love we have for, 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 for all mankind, they are image bearers of God. And we need to share the gospel. All right, any questions, final questions? All right, we'll be starting Acts 12 next Wednesday. Let's close. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Lord, we thank you for this great country. And I know we have a lot of issues, Lord, but I'm thankful we have a place we can come without any, any fear of persecution. And, Lord, we can sit down as brothers and sisters and learn from your word, God. Lord, it just, 
it just feeds my soul, Lord. It just gives me, a, uh, just my appetite is full after just sharing and teaching God's Word to my brothers and sisters. Lord, I'm so thankful. I'm thankful for the leaders of this church. I'm thankful for each one here. Thankful for those who are watching on the Internet. And I just ask that you bless them in a special way. But, Lord, I pray most of all that you would just put someone in our path this week that needs to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I pray that we would be bold enough to share. And I pray all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen.